coffee to start my day off. And they go like, wow. I said, yeah, it's not like, like you know, I get up and I, let's go to work, kid. <laughs> no, 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 that's not me at all. I love the casualness. I love just you know, the ritual of it. And then uh, I'll go out in the afternoon because I need to take a break. So what do you need? coffee break. So I go to the local coffee shop, which is down the block, or the one that's now down the block. When I come here, it's so different from when I go out. When I have my coffee here in the morning, it's usually a latte, okay? So it's milk and it's a coffee. When I go out to go have my coffee, I don't have any decoration at all. It's straight black coffee. Except if I'm at a Denny's, which you have to decorate the coffee because it doesn't taste like anything. <laughs> so you pour in the sugar. <laughs> but um, other than that, yeah, it's usually just black. And you? I think when somebody handed me a pencil and before me was a sheet of paper, it was drawing. And what I thought as I, I was a kid, I was able to create a world for myself. And everything else fell to the wayside. Your environment, people around you, this was your own private little world. And of course it was kid-like, it was like the boat and the water and the airplanes coming down and all the bullets and everything that goes on with those action-packed drawings as when you're a kid. But to me, that was, my, that was a world, and I was able to create it. By the time I was six or seven years old, I saw a movie, a very bad, 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 bad movie, and it was called Devil Girl from Mars. My life has not been the same since, because when I saw that film, it clicked in my head, somebody made that. That's what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to make things. I want to use my imagination and I want to use my hands to create something. So I think from even that early period in time, that was something that stayed with me. Then I started to align myself later on that, okay, why am I so fascinated by science fiction films? War of the Worlds from 1954. All of a sudden, it's like, you know what, that color, Paramount, Technicolor, red, red, blue, blue, green, green, all of those vibrancy of colors, that's what I'm going to use in my work. So I was taking a lot of those ideas from film and incorporating that in my sensibilities in my art-making practices. So sometimes people would say, oh, your colors, they're so Mexican, they're so, you know, fiesta, and they're like, wrong. Damn Yankees, MGM musical, JAMA game, War of the Worlds. Those were my sensibility. That's where I was taking a lot of my color palette from. So I think, you know, from an early age, that notion of film having an impact on the direction of who I became as, a, as an artist was instilled for me. I'd rather be here watching film. And, you know, when I have people come over, sometimes, you know, it's, oh, look at what I found, or, you know, like this movie I just got for three bucks at Big Lots. You know, it's kind of like, you know, that to me is exciting. You know, that to me is like the wonder of like something that, boy, it's like, look at what I found. Um, what was it called? Uh, Midnight Express. Do you know who wrote the screenplay? <laughs> Oliver Stone. He's one of my collectors. <laughs> so, all those, and I bought it for three bucks at Big Lots, you know, so it has like a story to it as well. And, and then, you know, all of a sudden, I put it out there in that atrium that we came up and if it's missing it's missing if somebody came along and said i'm taking snagging that so again it's just i, I had it for a moment and things are fleeting we're all temporal it's never going to last what do you do on a, a like to have fun well you know argentina has produced quite a bit of film brazil has mexico has Bunuel, when he was left Europe, went to Mexico, did a, a film called Los Olvidados, Exterminating Angel. 
He did this one called Grand Casino, which was a musical that he made that most people are not familiar with. So it's finding those kinds of things that to me are intriguing. It's the fact that, you know, he knew Salvador Dali, he knew Garcia Lorca, the Spanish playwright and poet. So I think those kinds of things are intriguing for me. And when I say I see films, some of them are like the B-movies from Mexico as well. Perdida is a film in particular from the late 40s where this woman is dressed in a very cha-cha looking outfit and all these men are dancing around her, almost a cheap version of Bubsy Berkeley, but they're all dressed like supermen and they're tiny little men and they're all wearing black shoes. So I'm thinking, you know, the call that day must have been, if you have black shoes, you can be in a movie because they were also uncoordinated and they were more enamored by the cape that they were wearing <laughs> than they were of the big star that's there dancing in her cha-cha. And then there's a moment in it where you see the image of the camera moving uh, as a shadow on the floor. Those mistakes I love and I seek out in the film as well. So those little things are intriguing for me. So I think that combination are indicators about the, the direction my work has taken. That combination, both. What is your background? It's as if I've taken apart the alphabet and then reassembled them to create my own form of hieroglyphics or calligraphy. So it's, I take things apart and then piece it, weave it back together again, and the outcome becomes what it is that I make. So it starts with fragments, bits and pieces again, and then I just stream it together, and hopefully it becomes something. I, I like that almost collage-like effect, and even in filmmaking, you know, there's, there's, you know, you do that with editing. Sometimes when I create something, It'll be an image, and then all of a sudden you look and you see another image. Well, in filmmaking, that's called a dissolve. When one image is moving into the next, you look at my work and it's one dissolve into the next. It's almost something, but not quite. So I freeze frame the dissolve in my art making practices. So I use that film language, I use that sensibility, and try to recreate it in a static medium, which is. Uh, the painting or the drawing or the body of work that I'm creating.